Bless the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. We glorify and edify the King of Kings and the Lord of Hosts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name.
know your truth, God, to receive what you would have us to receive, oh God. Your promises that are yea and amen. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. On this night, we declare, we decree, and we receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For we bless that wonderful name of Jesus.
He will help generate an atmosphere. I love the strings during this time because we're believing God that he will move and speak in a definitive way for his people. I want the ushers to prepare. Go ahead and give out the offering envelopes. And then we're going to take the bucket and put it down on the floor to be gathered at the end. And I'm going to strategically direct you to bring your offering because it is tied to the teaching and a release. Say, say there's a release. Amen, amen. And so as you're receiving your offering envelope and the bucket being placed in the center, I want to take advantage of our time allocation because I'd like to keep us as close as we can within the medium of our tradition. But I make no promises, tell no lie. For God is sovereign. And you, if you have to leave on the airway and come back, you do that. Amen. And we're still broadcasting. But I want you to hold fast to the fact that God is in this place. This chapter which has been one of our central, central, yes brother, our centralizing texts for the last week or so in that we've been sharing and teaching and expounding on Leviticus 23 and the concerning the feast of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. And as we look at Isaiah 53, starting at verse 1, the prophet, in these words in the King James, it says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed for he shall grow up of a dry ground he hath no form nor comeliness and when we shall see him there is he's despised and rejected of men Isaiah goes deep Amur our faces from him it was as if Isaiah was looking at a movie screen in the prophetic earthly trial that was the most hideous for our human consumption. He goes on to say, and we hid as it were our faces in him stricken. Surely he hath borne our griefs him stricken, smitten of God. That word is an old English word meaning to be struck. Verse 5, a verse of concentration says, but he was wounded. Say wounded. For our, for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Father, thank you for this time tonight. Let the words of my mouth be, let them bring, oh God, strength and manifestation to your people in Jesus' name. I want to share with you for a few moments from the topic. And if you could arrest this narrative, for you, it will put you in a pit. And that is, I want everything he paid for. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I want everything he paid for. Yes. 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 Nuances that are revealed to this season of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, it's known as also in the Hebrew picture of something unusual and breathtaking. 
speaking and life changing taking place during this season. Or for the sixth with the Feast of Trumpets, the beginning of the Jewish New Year, this is part of the to present to the people as set days for him during this time. Oftentimes, this particular feast was open with a time of fasting from sundown to now. And would go all the way to the following day. It would be a time of great reflection. And that sins were people. I shared with you that during my incubation into occupations, y'all ain't saying nothing. I started my work career as a young lad. As I passed the test with all the agrarian labor opportunities, watermelon peas, okra, squash, Y'all ain't saying nothing. Horse farm, cow farm work. I got promoted to bagging groceries at Win Dixie. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Say, pastors done, done it all. But one of my wonderful elevations was during my first year of college where I was invited to apply for a job at a local bank. And so I was initially a courier that transported documents and then a bank teller. And then I developed a relationship with a vice president who was opening a new bank and they invited me to come and work with them as I graduated from a two-year degree and was a junior at the University of Florida. They wanted me to come and work for a new bank in bookkeeping as the assistant bookkeeper. And because I had a, an accompany men of skills, I did bookkeeping, I did new accounts, I did tellering, and I did systems operation. But one of the things that I learned along the way is that God uses every experience to teach us something. Hallelujah! Don't despise small beginnings. And look at every opportunity as an opportunity for God to teach and reveal himself or truth. One of the things that was evident in banking that was the importance of good accounting. As an assistant bookkeeper, I worked with customers and making sure that their accounts were accurate. And many times when the customer had an account that was out of balance and they might have bounced a check or two, I was forced to sit down with them to help resolve and explain to them where it went wrong. One of the most definitive examples of accounting that I experienced was as the system operator because I had to stay some nights and support my co-worker and good friend Jeff Johnson. He's gone on to be with the Lord. Became a lifelong friend in those areas. That's another key that on these journeys you oftentimes meet people that, that come along the way you gain from them and they gain from you. Y'all stay with me. But systems operations required that I would stay. When Jeff wasn't there, who was the primary systems operator, and I would balance the bank. Every account, every department, loans, new accounts, and every penny had to be accounted for. Where am I going? Whenever there was something out of balance, I had to stay there and find where the error was. 
debits and credits and the law of math is that they have to balance on both sides of the ledger. And if they don't balance, then you did something wrong. Somebody made a mistake in encoding or putting in their data. You see, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, is an accounting. Not just thinking of mathematics, but it's a spiritual accounting where the people of God have to give an account of their sins and you cannot hide the numbers. They have to balance with God. As a systems operator, I had to balance with the Fed letter and balance with the ATMs and balance with the new accounts and balance with the tellers. But with Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, it's an, account, it's an accounting term that the accounts of God dealing with sin had to be balanced. Oh, what a message tonight. David gave us the report on humanity from his our spiritual eye. He said that, that God I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And he was giving a reflection of his life because he made some mistakes. But he was also speaking for us. David was a man after God's own heart. And David did great exploits. And he said, God... Boldly. I don't know if you can claim all the things they did. Sin still with God. Oh, glory. Say, I want everything he paid for. I mandate that, that all the accounts of humanity must be balanced in, and the sin account be made. That only the high priest could do at Yom Kippur. It was to liquidate the sin. It was to exonerate men from the guilt that his loving creation was due to be offset by a divine accounting. There in Leviticus we find the directive that only the high priest who was purified. He would change his garments multiple times to assure that he was clean. When he went into the holy place or presented the sacrifice of blood or to transfer the sin debt, he made sure he, the ritual was the high priest to make sure that his life was clean, that he was right because the, the failure to do so not only resulted in the people's sin remaining for the year, the nation's sin remaining for the year, but his life would be sacrificed. That's a that's a on the job training scenario like none other. So the high priest had to make sure his life was right. And when we translate that to the messianic narrative, Jesus Christ is the symbol of the priest in Yom Kippur who is the only one who was worthy to enter in and to present the offering before the Father. And when we think about the priest, he would take on and off linen garments and ephods and put on different exchanges of clothes. 
as he prepared to transfer the sins and settle the account. I can only see in Isaiah 53 yes. Come on now. inversely yes. instead of putting on mm. different linen attire as the high priest did and different ephods to carry it out and washing again that he took on these barbaric attacks against his body as a garment to prepare him to present us sins before God. So when God touched Isaiah the prophet in his time of sojourning, you got to spend time with God to get something from God. Amen. Isaiah got a glimpse of this Messiah. This sacrifice, this priest who did this duality. He put all these garments of, of, of affliction for us. that would atone, that would settle the account for sin. It was important because if the sins, if the accounting wasn't done, wasn't presented, then the nation and the people would be subject to the cursing of God rather than the blessing of God for the entire year. It's one thing to have a bad day. It's one thing to have a bad week. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ooh. Even a bad month, but can you imagine one entire year full of calamity? And, and if we're not careful, if we survey the condition of our nations, we survey the condition of the world, We might even suggest that something is not being addressed. People are not rendering their hearts to God. They're not ridding their hearts so that their sins can be accounted. But they're calling wrong right and right wrong. Governments are passing laws that violate the laws of God. So we wonder why certain things are manifesting where the grace of God retracts from sin but when sin is accounted for God covers say I want everything he paid for for the believer that's us that's us beloved we operate not in this world's Scenario, but in God's kingdom scenario. And when we give our life to Jesus, He settles the account for us and makes us worthy. In this season of Yom Kippur, there was, there was an extended time beyond those days. If I'm not mistaken, 10 days. And the people kept and continued a sense of reverence. But in those days, they also benefited from the grace that was being extended. And one of the things that I believe was my assignment tonight was to remind us that God brought our healing in the atonement, sacrifice. What do you mean, Pastor? Oh, Isaiah says that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
And with those stripes, we are healed. Beloved, one of the challenges of this earthly life that we have times of attack, affliction, sickness. As we watch our world, our nation, our city adapt, reflect the virus there's so many other human afflictions, depravities that people are fighting. But I'm here to remind you tonight that we're eligible for everything Jesus paid for. And in his atoning act, he has purchased our healing. I'm here to remind you of John, the fifth chapter. You can turn it over to me. There we find a, a man in a diverse place. In verse 1, he says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews. It's another holy time like we're in right now. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda, having five porches. First thing I want to convey that there's always, always say always, a divine connection between. I want to want you to take a monetary alone posture. But passing the sheep gate, that was the place by which the offerings were being prepared for the people to use during the worship time. I want you to take your offering for tonight, whatever it is. If you don't have an offering, I want you to to lead over and get a dollar, get, a, get 50 cents, because giving releases something from this natural realm that stimulates the spiritual. I know sometimes our Christian brothers or sisters seem to exploit the offering But there's a divine tie between giving and breakthrough. Sometimes our healing, even though it's already paid for, there's a breakthrough event that's initiated and giving is oftentimes that breakthrough event. There's a story in the book of Genesis of a man by the name of Jacob who stole his brother Esau's birthright. And the short of the story is when he fleed and, and sojourned with his uncle Laban for over 20 years having one, two wives and turned to his father. He had prepared to give to Esau, the brother that he offended, an offering to secure peace. Why did he do it? Because an offering oftentimes produces a sense of Generosity to the one that's due. Encourage favor from the giver. Say my offering brings me favor. Hold it up before you, Lord, whatever you have. Father, we thank you for this time of giving. We thank you for this time of Yom Kippur. We thank you for this day of atonement. 
overflow. And as we give tonight, thank you for the favor that it releases into our life for healings, miracles, signs, and wonders for our own self and for those that we love. We thank you for the atonement in Jesus' name. If you will, whatever you have, just bring it, drop it in the bucket. Go back to your seat as I finish. Because your offering brings it was the passing of the sheep gate that implored the consciousness to give. Every festival, feast, occasion, there was an instruction by God to prepare an offering. Giving releases something out of your hand so that we can receive something from the hand of God. Back to John 5, it says this. Now there, in those, in these, lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Say people had needs. A blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Sometimes we go through afflictions for a season, for multiple seasons, waiting for our breakthrough moment. Say, I'm waiting for my breakthrough. Then it says, verse 1, for an angel went down at a certain season. Say, this is my season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in and was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. I believe that this season is a season where we can expect Miracles, signs, and wonders, unusual manifestations, healings, deliverances, because when Jesus presented the atonement offering, it was not just for the sins, but it was for the healing. He paid the price for it in his body so that we don't have to pay the price in our body. So abandon feelings of failure and guilt because you have struggled with a chronic pain, illness, trial. Because sometimes we go through seasons. But God sent Jesus to pay for our healing. And I want anything he paid for. Hallelujah! Shortness is never in God. As a young believer, God began to manifest in my life through the Spirit in dreams and visions, but also in words of knowledge and in healing. I remember as a young United Methodist, I went to my pastors and I said, why don't we do and see healings like we read about in the Bible? I know I had to be 14 or 15 getting on the pastor's nerve with all these questions. But something in me knew that there was more that Jesus wanted us to walk in. Say, I want more. Say, I want it all. And healing. The Bible says is one of the benefactors of the atonement of Jesus Christ to build your faith. It tells us throughout the word of God Deuteronomy 7 and 15 and the Lord will take away from thee all sicknesses. Say all and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, 
but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Yeah, yeah. I want to build your faith, though. You may have walked with a chronic illness, high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, but our God is a healer. Philippians 4 and 19 says, but my God shall do what? Supply what? Some? All your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Sometimes our needs are not physical, but they're emotional. They're mental. And I'm speaking to someone tonight that you've been in a dark place. You've been in a dark pit in your mind, in your the depths of your emotions, and you almost want to give up. I'm speaking to aloneness. There's been a pit that you've been thrown in because of circumstances. Like Joseph. Just because you had favor, people hated you. Shanda! And what the devil meant to isolate you, that you might be consumed with depression, tonight we're calling you out of the pit of depression heaviness. You've been relocated to this area and you have not found your niche, your place, and you feel alone. But speaking, unity, restoration, fellowship for you. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's stay in this atmosphere of healing and prayer. For God desires for us to get everything Jesus paid for. Say, I want it all. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms that healing is the children's bread. And there's a degree of continuance that sometimes you go through things, you, you, you overcome one cold, then you go to another situation, and, and that's what, you know, like bread is, you, you, you hit bread, you, got, you use bread, and bread, bread is a substance that you can be strengthened from. Bread was a, a major part of the diet. Yes, yes. And so it's a benefit for you ongoingly. Jeremiah 17 and 14 says, Heal me, Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. Say, I want everything. Father, we thank you tonight. For we, we release healing in this building. Father, we release healing. And even in this time of the virus and COVID, it seems like we pulled away from our confidence to pray for the sick. But I rebuke the spirit of fear. And I pray for the sick. For the Bible says that James called for the elders of the church. Anoint the sick with oil. The prayer of faith shall heal the sick. If there be any sins, they shall be 
atone for forgiving. Hallelujah. We pull back the spirit of condemnation because of religion to suggest that because you have a, an affliction, a sickness, that you're in sin, we say not so. For Jesus had a dialogue written in the scriptures where a young man received his healing. And the naysayers, we wonder who had sinned, this man or his family that he was born blind. And Jesus said, neither, but that the glory of God may be revealed. Some things we go through is for God to get the glory. Say, I want God to get the glory over my life. Father, we thank you right now for healing. High blood pressure healing. Narrowing arteries. Healing. Hypertensive conditions. Healing, circulation issues, whatever you claim for yourself, for yourself, whatever you need. Father God, even the dimming of eyes, cataracts, the shaping of the eyes, the orifice of the eyes, the circular curvature of the eyes. We pray, focus. Come against addiction, bondages, cocaine, marijuana. The only thing we want to get high on is the spirit of God. Shut up, we pray that spirit of the python, spirit of out of that system. Prayers them. With hits them, and they shall be washed in the and we'll be whiter than snow. Father, we thank you right now for a father praying for a son who's going through addiction, a mother praying for a son going through addiction. In the name of Jesus, Jane, Jeanette, Jane, Jeanette, I don't know. God's God hears you. In the name of Jesus. Shout that out about seat. I hear Oscar. God is better. Oscar, we stand in agreement with your healing. Texas, Texas. Oscar, we stand in it right now. Oscar, we thank you right now. Father, thank you. Thank you. On this day of atonement. And for those in this building, I'm going to make myself available to lay hands and pray. We're going to put on a mask and pray for everyone here before you, who wants prayer before I leave. But I want everyone to say a corporate declaration saying, In the name of Jesus, who paid the price for my healing. I receive my healing from, and you speak whatever you're fighting. You speak it softly, you whisper it softly, call it out in the name of Jesus. We speak healing from it right now. We command it to go in Jesus' name. There's a pain on the right side of your face. It's it's not necessarily a tooth, but it might be a jaw pain or something, but it's on the right side. We speak healing to that right now in the name of Jesus. To foot fractures, bone spurs, hammer toes, y'all ain't saying nothing. We speak healing to that right now in the name of Jesus. Say, by his strength. I'm here. Beloved, we thank you for joining us on this Day of Atonement Overflow. 
presence of God is in this place. I believe it's coming forth across. This vehicle, a video, and as you watch it, first, second, third time, the presence of God is going to continue to intensify over your life and over your circumstance. Father, we thank you for the sin sick soul. You're tired of being in sin. Let me get you out. Repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe you sent Jesus to die for me, to bear my sins, that I may walk in righteousness. I receive him as the Lord of my life. I receive him as my savior, my substitute. I believe he's coming again. I confess him. I'll live for him. And if I have to, I'll lay down my life for him. And I thank you, God, for loving me enough to send him for me. And right now, with my confession, I receive your salvation, God. Amen. If you pray that prayer with me and you utter that, if you, you meant it with your heart, you're saved. The Bible says that angels rejoice. Dark becomes light. The Spirit of God is hovering over you and drawing you and receive even the Holy Ghost that gives you power like none other to be a witness. We thank you for joining us. Text us. Connect with us that we might give account. Again, Oscar, Je Jeanette, uh, of your head, God is healing that. Be healed in Jesus' name. We love you, beloved. Join us Sunday. And we'll see you at church. God bless you and good night. Hallelujah.